Hello beautiful people, future me. Welcome to another programming workout of mine. It is the second one, which I'll change second. Uh, then I'll go outside while well, there is a still light. So yeah, just just start. trying to say there is a one what So many typos. I don't know what you mean, Piggy. longer sentences. That's, that's better than I thought it will be.
this concludes our typing session and we continue onwards with those things this I don't need yeah and I wanted to save the thing is for hibernate and this one is for the table in our database and we also need to say at and an ID and then here we're going to generate a sequence so sequence and then generator and here I'm gonna say name equals to and then student and sequence and you'll see this in a second we also need to have the sequence name which will be the same and also the allocation size so allocation size this will be one and then here this will be sequence and then name created value and then the default what we recommended for postgres is a sequence i want to say scratch sequence that we just created student underscore and then sequence what just fucking happened that so the constructor with everything then we also have another one without the id and we'll see why in a second because the database will generate the id for us that's way back so let's say that she's from january and then the date let's say the 5th of january just like that and then comma and then here let's just simply say 21 we could actually subtract this so subtract now tj and and i'm gonna open up the palm.xml before remember we commented out click and then maven and then reload project there we go and now i can start the application and there we go so we actually connected to our database right here you can see the logs so we have the carry started and then completed using postgres right here and everything is looking good but we don't have any tables yet in our database and that's what i'm going to show you how to do next all right so we've successfully connected to our database now what we want to do is take this student right here and use spring data jpa to create a table inside of our database that we can then add delete and basically perform all of the correct operations against our database so to do that is very straightforward with spring boot and spring data jpa so in here so this dependency right here that we just then commented gives us this ability and if you want to learn about spring data jpa go ahead and check my course on spring data jpa where i teach all of this so now let me go back in here and open up student class and to map this student to our database simply type at and then entity right here and then say at and then table so this one is for hibernate and this one is for the table in our database and we also need to say at and then id and then here we're going to generate a sequence so sequence and then generator and here i'm going to say name equals to and then student and then sequence and we'll see this in a second we also need to have the sequence name which will be the same and also the allocation size so allocation size this will be one and then here this will be sequence and then name just like that and now that we have a sequence generator in here, I'm also going to now say at and then generated value, and then the default or the recommended for Postgres is a sequence. I want to say strategy equals to and then sequence. There we go. And the generator is sure. see how to do start application is just always done. So let's go ahead and we have some login branch starting up one increment one, so increment one, and then student, and then all of these fields. And the primary key now we have to my database, so new data source, so I'll just press here database, and then new data source, and then Postgres below. See that it work apply okay and inside right, we have the table right here student see the columns and we have the sequence student sequence so if i open up my shell so in here remember before when i type backslash d we had no relations now if i type backslash d again there you go so you see that we have this table student and the sequence so let me now describe the student and you can see that we get the exact same thing in here so we have the index for the primary key and all of these columns so this is pretty nice so what we are missing now is this part right here so the data access layer we have the database configured i've been running with one table called student next let's go ahead and implement this layer right here that will interact with our database right so you saw the power of how we took a class and then we mapped that class to a table in our database so if you want to learn more about databases and spring data jp um you know, i think that's quite it's uh, it's a pretty common and then into one itself and they All right, let's go ahead and implement the data access layer. So open up IntelliJ, and right here, I'm going to create a class inside of the student package. And this class, I'm going to call it student and then repository. So this is the name convention for anything that access your database, and specifically when you are working with JPA, which we are. So now this has to be an interface, and we'll see the power of this in a second. 
enter. There we go. So we have the interface there, and then let me collapse that. Now, also, let me press that. Now you saw that this actually um, is using some numerics and we have to specify a couple of things. So first we have to specify T, so the type of object that we want this repository to work with and also the ID for the type that we want. So here, let's go ahead and say student. So this is the type that we want to work with, comma, and let's put this just like that so we can see everything. And here, remember, the ID for our student, so the type is long. So if I open up student, you can see that the type is long here. So that's why this is long and this is the type that we want this repository to work upon. Now let's annotate this with at, oops, not uh, backslash two, but at, and then repository. So the same way that we have at service, at rest controller, this is at repository because this interface is responsible for data access. And to be honest, this is... is everything for this layer. Now let's connect things using dependency injection. So in here, open up project, and we want to use this interface inside of our service. So in here, let me collapse this. So instead of having a list like this, so static list, we want to say private final and student repository. There we go. Then we want to add it to the constructor, and then let's also annotate the constructor with add and then auto wire, just like that. Yeah, we'll do the service too. This list, what we're going to say is, so let me actually um, just copy this student because I'm going to need it in a second. But now I'm going to say in here, repository, I'll actually return, and then repository dot, and then check this out. So we have a bunch of methods here. We have find all, we can pass the sorting if you want by ID, we can save, and we can flesh, we can count, exists, find one.
save all, delete all, and you see now we have a bunch of methods. And to be fair, we haven't implemented none of this, right? And this is the magic called Spring Data JPA. So here, all, and you see now we have a bunch of methods. I don't have a good all. Find all. To be honest, this is it. So this interface that we've just implemented, so student repository, this. So if I navigate to this file, you see that it's an interface that has all of these methods here available to us. We haven't written a single line of SQL or code, and we can fetch students from our database. Next, let's go ahead and add some students into our database using this repository. see that everything will be working so api to service data access fetching from the database and then returning that response to our client all right so let's go ahead and start our server there we go so server up and running and if i open up our browser so remember here before we had one student mariam and now if i refresh this we can see that we have an empty array and this is because there is no one in our database and in fact to prove that to you so in here what i'm gonna do is before food, let's go ahead Hold on, I have a the project open somewhere. What's the third one?
focus 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 right there student service good students yeah so you will auto wire the service to it Okay, and that it's in the controller and the service. I will also do
ますけどね。Hey, Karno. Yeah, I want a drum star. I want just to insert. Well, I can do it <laughs> via the a controller. this
the SQL, then I don't know how to. Oh, thank you. Oh, have a look. Okay, I'll, I'll check it. Yeah, I just want to like save something to the database and look how it looks in the database. Because right now I have some problems. For example, here on my controller, I have this get mapping, right? And I'm trying to return this like ingredient, but it returns an empty empty object I don't know why so uh, I want to what the fuck how come it works suddenly Does it work? I did provide this. This constructor is that. What make me? made it work well I have it on multiple you know I have this this worked this I was returning all the time then I had the list where is it here the list that also did not work so if I go to here and say list that also did not return anything, so it, uh, I would say like the, the chance that I missed the return statement or two places is kind of slim. Uh, I don't think that that was the reason. But, okay, and the data, data works, fucking A. Okay, so, we do data number field. Start the application, huh? What the fuck? Still have. Oh, yeah, because I'm fucking moron. <laughs> it is a map. It is a map. Okay, okay, well, time for me to go. So this concludes this session.
That means we are done. That is better than perfect. Uh...